Welcome to worship. Everybody stand up if you could, please. We're going to sing, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. No matter what happens in our lives, the good, the bad, the ugly, we're still going to bless His name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. I'll sing it like you mean it. Here we go. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Oh, every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Oh, we're going to bless his name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Oh, I'll be blessed. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Lord, bless in your name, Lord Jesus. Come before us in your presence. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessing is wonderful name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're here to bless you no matter what goes on in our lives. We're here to praise you in spirit and in truth. So speak to us, Lord, here today as we bow our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Well, if you grew up in, uh, in traditional worship, you may recognize this hymn.
called Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. There is salvation, the purchase of God, born of the Spirit. Washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, each and every one of us have a story to tell of what Christ has done in our lives as we seek to follow Him in spirit and in truth, and we submit to Him. Perfect submission. At risk, I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking up, filled with His goodness. Lost in my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. telling us and showing us your grace, your love, and your mercy as we uh, seen together. You know, um, it's easy to think that the God of the old is not the same God, but he is. The same God who did miracles back then is ready to do miracles now as we cry out to him. I'm calling on the God of Jacob. Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh, he will, as we cry out our need for you, oh God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Are you so faithful? Thank you, Lord. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, oh yes, who made a 
shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath but I've got my own giants oh God my God I need you oh God my God I need you now how I need you As he heard his children and his people back then, he can hear us today. Do you believe it? You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same. Oh, do you believe it? You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You move in power then. God move in power now. You are the same God. You are the same. God, you're so faithful, Lord Jesus. The same God of yesterday is the God today. We're grateful for that, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You freed the captives and you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers and I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Say this as a prayer. Come and fill me again. Oh, one more time. 
come and fill me. Come and fill me again. Yes, Holy Spirit, we ask you that you fill us up with all that you are so that we can, we can feel your presence. We can feel your holiness and your healing touch in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise offering this morning. He's worthy of our praise. Hey, please be seated at this time. Welcome to Lake Point Church. How are y'all doing? Great. Awesome. Good. You can clap. Clap. Good. Clapping. The Holy Spirit is here in this place, and we're so excited that, that uh, not only are you here, but God is here. And uh, if you believe that God is here, then you will believe that he has a word for you today. He has something for you today. So my encouragement for you is to approach this entire gathering together as, as something of anticipation that God will speak to your hearts uh, today. So that's what we want. We want God to speak. Hey, uh, if you're here uh, for the first time at Lake Point Church, or maybe you're watching online for the first time, we're so delighted you could join us. Uh, there should be a connection card on the seat pocket in front of you. If not, you can find one at the uh, connection point uh, table. When you fill that out, you could drop it in the offering box in the back. Or you can drop it off at Connection Point. Uh, we'd love to uh, give you a free gift there as well. And uh, for those who are watching online, you can uh, simply go to lakepointonline.com forward slash connect. And that will connect you with everything part of our church. There's a connection card you can fill out. Uh, some prayer requests. We'd love to uh, pray for you and alongside you, anything that's going on in your life. I do have a couple announcements. Uh, quite a few, actually. Uh, ladies Retreat. Uh, you're invited to Ladies Retreat, which is June 23rd through 25th. And so mark your calendars so Kent to attend. Last year was our very first ladies retreat, and it was a huge success. Uh, I mean, I didn't go because I'm not a lady, but that's what I heard. It was a huge success. It was awesome, and they want to do it again. And so uh, my wife uh, and others are kind of leading that. And so it uh, cost us $200, and it's an incredible place they're staying, incredible view. And so you're going to want to be a part of that. So you can go to our website, or you can text the word ladies to 833-429-6868. Uh, TDR Student Camp uh, is coming up 12th of the 17th. Students, your $75 is due April 19th, okay? So make sure you get that in, and uh, you can go register online, lakepointonline.com forward slash camp. That'd be great. And then Grief Share, we're offering a Grief Share on Tuesdays, and this is for anyone who is going through any kind of grief or loss, whether it be from a, a, a person, a situation, obviously a relationship. Um, and so we've been having just a lot of that in our church. And so we just felt like the Lord was telling us, hey, this is a ministry opportunity. And so uh, we're doing that. So Grief Share is the number one go-to um, resource for those who are walking in grief. And so we've, we've committed, uh, you have committed uh, to purchasing that material and uh, getting on board with that. And so uh, that all starts, we were going to try to start it this coming Tuesday. We had to push it back a week, just wait for the materials again. But it starts on next Tuesday, um, and it's at uh, 6 o'clock at our ministry center. And if you want more information, just go to uh, lakepointonline.com forward slash grief, and I uh, would love for you to sign up for that. And also, there's a ladies' Bible study. It's called The Cost of Control, Okay. So, ladies, if you feel like you're, uh, I mean, I probably need to go to this because I feel like I, I, I like to control things, but I'm not allowed to go to that. So, anyway, but cost and control is a, a Bible study that y'all are doing. It's on Saturdays at 10 o'clock at the ministry center, and it's really, really good. It's a great opportunity for you to just collaborate with others, and so that'll be, um, that's every Saturday. And then, uh, finally, on Saturday, uh, April 29th at 6 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, Lake Alatoona by Bethany Bridge is um, a father, son, or father and kid, grandfather, kid, whatever kind of combination you want. It's a fishing trip. And so uh, you can be a part of that. And breakfast is provided. So even if you don't like to fish, just go for the free breakfast. You just got to be there at 6. And then, uh, but if you want to fish, then you need to bring your stuff. But uh, if you want more information, you can contact Terry Kruger or Randy Tucker, and uh, they'll get you all signed up for that. But that is going to be Saturday, uh, April 29th, and so you want to make sure that you uh, you're get a part of that, all right? Uh, everybody good? All right. 
All right, we want to make sure we uh, dismiss the kids. So, kids, as you are in here, um, if you could just stand up. Great. Okay, stay right there. We're going to pray over you, okay? Everybody, let's, let's say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up these kids, lift up the teachers. I pray, Father, your word will be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. I pray, Lord, as they, as they get to know you and your love for them, Lord, that that, that seed will be planted, Lord, and that they will uh, shed that light, share that light with others. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you uh, help them, Lord, to grow stronger in their faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's give the kids a uh, praise offering as they make their way over here. And you can go over here with Suzanne, and uh, they'll follow on out that way. Okay, now it's your turn. If everyone could please stand and just greet those around you. Thank you. All right, if everyone could be, uh, go back to your seat. If everyone could, could continue to stand and uh, just a continued act of, of worship, this song has been in my heart for the longest time. And um, as we sing together, we encourage you to sing out in whatever situation you're facing, uh, whatever situation you're facing in your life, just put in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation you're facing, just put in the name of Jesus. I hope this song uh, ministers to you as we worship and sing out the name of Jesus. Addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus, over fear and all anxiety. in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus so let's sing up raise our voices 
Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I'll speak the holy name of Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I always speak your name, Jesus, over every sickness, over every problem. Yes, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated at this time. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We come at a time of our service um, where we are just continue to worship. And I tell you what, when, whenever we give, and I'm not talking about just financially. I'm talking about give of our time, give of our energy, of our presence, of, of all that God has given to us, our very life. When we give that as an act of worship, I tell you, it's just something happens. Something happens. God is able to uh, work through that, that sacrifice of worship and really tap into the very core of who we are and kind of wake us up a little bit. And so I want to encourage you just um, with our life. Our life is really our worship. I know we just got through singing and corporate worship, and that's great. But that's not really the, 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 the epitome of worship. Worship is our life. And uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. Part of that, part of that life, obviously, is, is what God has given to us, our resources. And so as we give to the Lord, uh, just know this, that he's going to use that for his kingdom. He's going to take care of your needs. Uh, and uh, I know there's many, many stories. And we've got some of, our, of ourselves where God just continues to take care um, of the needs as we just continue to trust in him and as we continue to give to him. And so I want to encourage you to do that as well. Uh, before we ask the Lord to bless our offering, uh, I do want to let you know that our big give that we're doing is uh, we're collecting food can items uh, for the Red Door Food Pantry. And so we'd love for you to uh, just bring some canned food items and put them in the, in the big gear barrel uh, in the uh, lobby. And uh, Red Top Middle School is also helping us uh, with that. And so as we help replenish that food pantry here in Cartersville. 
And if you want to give financially to the mission of our church, there's many ways you can do that. There's an offering envelope on the back table, and you could do that, or you can uh, give by uh, just going to our website, like cornonline.com forward slash give, or you could text the word give to 833-429-6868. Lots of different ways you can give, and uh, or through the mail, lots of different ways. But most importantly, it's really all about what God has, um, just uh, an act of worship of what God has done, what God has provided uh, for you. And uh, let's ask the Lord to bless um, this offering and also to bless his word. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you, Lord, for the awesome privilege we have to just stand before our holy God, a God who uh, just loves us and you proved your love for us. You gave your son. You showed us, Lord, uh, Father God, by giving Jesus uh, the epitome of what um, love is. And Lord, as we give to you, Lord, we give to you out of love, pure love and worship. And I pray, Father, you bless this tithe uh, to the further of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, we, we are starting a brand new series this week called the Sermon on the Mount. And so we encourage you to be reading through that sermon, uh, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And, uh, but we're going to start with Matthew chapter 5, the first few verses. And I've asked uh, Pastor Terry to uh, kick this series off. So y'all give it up for Pastor Terry. All right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. All right. It's an honor and a privilege to be honest with you to start this series. Um, it's a, we've all hear, heard about the, the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, but because that we're digging a deeper dive into it, I learned a lot from these verses today from the Beatitudes. It really struck me when uh, Pastor Frank and I were talking about when, who's going to do what for the beginning. And, of course, at my house, it's been busy. My in-laws were in town and, and all that and working and helping the church. But, you know, I was reflecting on it. Even this morning when I was coming to church, it really hit me hard. And that's what Scripture is supposed to do. The Holy Spirit is supposed to stir our hearts and our minds. And also the Holy Spirit should convict us if we need convicting. The reason why is because God loves us. We need to be, you know, straightened out a little bit every now and then. And for me, for this, it was good. Again, we're starting with the Sermon on the Mount series. It's like Pastor Frank said, chapters 5 through 7 of Matthew. And it's a continuous message from Jesus delivered at one specific time. If you turn to your Bibles to Matthew 5, we'll read the first two verses, 1 through 2. If you don't have your Bible, it's up on the screen or the devices that you have. See in the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. There we go. Jesus is starting off to talk to disciples, but not only that, he was talking to people that were following him. There was religious leaders that were in the multitude of crowds. We got to understand that because some of the religious leaders did not want to know Jesus for who Jesus is at that time. A lot of them, they said, okay, another prophet's coming, another false prophet's coming, a false teacher, etc. And the setting is, it doesn't say exactly in the scripture, but it says on a mountain, but it's to believed to be above Tabga, near Capernaum on a ridge of hills northwest of the town with a view of Sea of Galilee. Jesus sat in the middle of the circle of disciples and the other multitude there. That is very significant as we look at that. Because if Jesus was standing like he normally did with, with the crowds on there, it would be almost kind of like an informal message, right? Even though Jesus is God. But when Jesus sat down amongst the disciples and everybody else, he was doing it with a divine authority coming from him. Think about that. He had to teach something, not only to disciples, but to everybody else. You've got to remember what Pastor Frank said last week, too. A lot of people were following Jesus. A lot of people were flocking to Jesus because of what? The miracles that he did, right? We see that. They wanted to see who this person is and who he is, what he is all about. And just like today, right, when, when word of mouth comes out, we got technology today. How fast does word get about anything, even false stuff, Right? But there it was moving like fire about Jesus. 
Again, today we're covering the Beatitudes from Matthew, and be three, 3 through 10. And the title of the message for today is Our Spiritual Life. We will see that throughout these verses. And we're going to continue in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. It reads, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will, shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are, shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for this gathering that we have to fellowship together and praise you, God. Holy Spirit, be with each of us now and be with me as I share what you have put on my heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. The Beatitudes, in a sense, build a spiritual ladder from the point of salvation to be like Christ-likeness. Another way to look at the Beatitudes is our sense of spiritual need to our new life in Christ that continues throughout our lives. Sometimes we call that sanctification. The Beatitudes really demand a response from us. The Beatitudes are not as much as informational, but as motivational for us. I believe that. There are three points for the message today. Verses 3 through 5 is our humility Verses 6 through 9 is our desires. Verses 10 through 12 is our persecution. Let's talk about blessed for a moment. I could go on for a long time about the word blessed. But in a sense, blessed means happy or fortunate or even joyful. Blessed is so much more than a temporary circumstance, feeling of happiness. It is a state of well-being in relationship to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Our God-given happiness is not based on physical circumstances, but our inner joy. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are happy. We are filled with joy. We are gleaming. Our face should be lighted like a bright star. Blessedness is a current attitude towards God, and even in our life, but it also has an eschatological hope to it. There is hope that we see in the future through the Beatitudes. You know, when I see this, the Sermon on the Mount, it gives us, it's not only for believers, right? It tells us about our spiritual life. But for others, what others can see in people and what Jesus is teaching us today through the scripture about what the spiritual life is and what it ought to be. First point, our humility, shown in verses three through five. Verse three, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit is to be humbled and to be in humility. Sometimes in life, sometimes we are humbled by force, are we not sometimes, right? By certain actions of different circumstances, we are made low. Poor in spirit is not in regards to money for food like beggars, but shows our spiritual inadequacy that we do need God. Like that one song we talked about, we were saying about we need God. Even for believers that have been believers for 50, 60, 60, we need God. We absolutely need God. And of course, we have Jesus to help us. And of course, the working of the Holy Spirit. The poor in spirit is not those who are spiritually poor, that is, lacking in faith or love, but those who have a humble spirit and thus depend on God. The result of being poor in the spirit is the kingdom of heaven. The phrase refers to the reign of God in human hearts right now. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven is with you right now. When all of us are together as believers, the kingdom of heaven is right here. Don't forget that. 
The kingdom of heaven refers to the reign of Christ in the hearts of believers. We know that Jesus reigns. He is our true king. There is no other king in the world. Jesus is the true king. For those who are saved, you and me are part of that kingdom again now. Remember that. And in verse 4 we see, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourn obviously is to be sad, to be grieving. And in some certain cultures that we see throughout the world, it's a deep wailing that comes out, is it not? It's really well. You can hear it from a long way. And some of us do that too now and then, right? From a death of a loved one, right? That's really close. We do see that. But when we look at this text, we see that mourning is for our sin also. We cannot forget that because when we go to verse 6, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be hitting that hard, but it's about our sin, Remember that Jesus is deeply concerned about all of our legitimate sorrows for us. And Jesus promises to console us when we need it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is speaking of godly sorrow. Godly mourning. In this type of, who are, in this type of mourning for those who sincerely desire to belong to him, or who already belong to him, can experience this do we mourn for our sins 2 Corinthians 7 verses 10 through 11 reads for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret whereas worldly grief produces death for see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you but also what eagerness to clear yourselves with indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point, you have proved yourselves innocent in a manner. See where godly grief leads us to? And the result of those who mourn is for they shall be comforted. This is really good news. It is not the mourning that blesses us, but the comfort that God gives those to who mourn. Even when we have physical calamities in our lives that we mourn, we need to be comforted by loved ones about Jesus Christ. When we talk about our sin, at least for me, sometimes when I mourn for sin, I forget about God helping me. And I need that. We need that. Because remember in Hebrews, it talks about God it's going to discipline us, right? Talks about Hebrews. The comfort that we see in, in this verse is now and in a future aspect, only in the sense that the blessing comes after the obedience. The comfort comes after the mourning. As we continually mourn for over our sin, we shall be continually comforted in this present life. Now, many of you have seen people come to Jesus Christ in the saving way that had been on drugs or or even I, I, I've incurred, occurred seeing one that somebody, she was a prostitute for many years. You talk about mourning for her sin. And one time I had the privilege at the church I was at that we had addiction ministry. A guy came out of jail. He spent 30 years in jail. But he never confessed his sin to God that he murdered somebody. Right then, that night, he confessed to God. He confessed to the courts. But the tears that I saw in that guy's face and sincere heart and sorrow from him, was I'll never forget it. And the look on his face after he confessed and we prayed over him, it was unbelievable. See what God can do even in sin and even our physical calamities? There are three steps that we can become godly mourners First one is to eliminate the hindrances. What are those hindrances? You know, sometimes we have the love of sin. We need to hate sin. And we can be conceited. Don't hide your sin. Confess them to God. Don't presumptuous. Presumptuous is a form of pride and procrastination putting off the mourning of sin. When we are in our alone time, when we come to God, when there's nobody around, it's okay to mourn. 
We serve a holy God who deserves our best and our praises. And he cares for us. And what another step is to pray. And another one is to be in the word of God. Like Pastor Frank said last week, be in that word every single day. In verse five, we see, blessed is the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meek is gentle, mild, and again, there's a sense of humbleness to this. Its origin implies a domesticated strength like a trained horse. Recognizing our God, our need for God makes us humble and teachable. God wants to direct our strengths, not break them. Meekness is not weakness. Jesus was meek, yet he drove the changers from the temple. Moses was meek, yet he judged sinners and even faced Aaron with his sin. Meekness means not asserting my own rights, but living for the glory of God. And because of that, we are to show other people that. We are to show them that the meekness, we're gentle with people, right? Well, I tell you, sometimes it's hard to be gentle, is it not? Especially those kids, I see it, right? Amen? And I'm glad we're out of that stage in our life until we get grandkids, but man, oh man. And the result of meekness is inherit the earth. Inherit, obviously, is to receive or to be given or to gain possession. Inherit the earth was often associated with the Israelites when they were promised the promised land, right? Our inheritance of the earth is not entirely future, but there is a part of that, right? The inheritance that will heaven, a new heaven and a new earth will be coming. We are to, at this time, we are to appreciate many things, even earthly things, and what God has given us. Amen to that. Second point, our desires. Verse six, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. In short, what we talk about righteousness, it is doing what God desires, and what we do is right. Where do we go for that? Where's our source? The Bible, the working of the Holy Spirit, Jesus. To hunger and to thirst is to desire strongly. To hunger and thirst for righteousness is to have a spiritual appetite, a continuing desire for personal righteousness. This beatitude speaks of strong desire, a driving pursuit of a passionate force inside the soul. And I'm not talking about legalism. See, sometimes in, in certain Christian cultures that people say, okay, you're too legalistic, yet yeah, you have a point. But deep down, what's their desire, right? They want to do what's right, what the Bible says, what God expects. Hunger and thirst reflects the kingdom person's ongoing attitude toward God. Many of us here today, when we were out in the work field and we do something stupid or we drop something or something happens, Sometimes we blurt out something, right? We have a soul, a desire to do things perfectly in life, right? That should be the way we are when it comes to God. Do you and I desire a real, true righteousness today in this society? I don't know. And even deeper than that, do we hunger and thirst for God? What comes more important in our life? Like Pastor Frank said last week, God, Jesus is first, Right? He is first. When we look in the mirror, what do we see? Fall. Distorted image because of our sin. We got to have that deep hunger, hunger pain for God. Deep, deep hunger and thirst. Because I'm going to be honest. That I think if that we started the hunger and thirst, not only for righteousness, for God, this church would look different. It would look absolutely different. Because this Ask Diane, when we were helping the youth group in Wisconsin, I had kids in my small group would call me, let's do evangelism at any time. Of 
course I would say yes. Right? And Nikki, the one that used to do it, he's a pastor now in Illinois. They had a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Deep hunger. And I could never say no to them. I probably drove Diane crazy sometimes. It did. She's shaking her head. But I could not resist. In fact, one time, we did worship by a railroad track at somebody's house on a farm. And we did worship and everything. The next thing, we were burning a couch. But you know what? They were hungry and thirst for God and Jesus. It's something that I was so excited about when I saw that from the generation. Do we have that? You know what? Our excitement should not end in when we were baptized. It should be growing. And if you look to 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16, it reads... Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded and set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also will be holy in your conduct. The result of hunger and thirst for righteousness is that we will be satisfied. Right? We will be satisfied. Physical food satisfies our stomach, right, and our mind, right? Especially the food that you like. But satisfied is literally, in this text, gorged. This term was used of fattening cattle for market. See, if we continue and to strive for righteousness, we will be full of God. We are already because of our faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit working in us. Let's think about that. We will be totally full. We'll be gorged. As with other beatitudes, the goal of hungering and thirsting for righteousness is a twofold. One, for the unbeliever, the goal is salvation, and for the believer, it's sanctification. Satisfied, again, is literally gorged. Do we have an appetite? Are we satisfied in God? Do we have a fill of Him in our life today? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy is the result, not the grounds of knowing God. It is the ability to put oneself in another situation, act with compassion. Jesus had mercy in us, right? He died on the cross for his sins. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me and for the world. If he can do that, we can have mercy for others. You know what? As believers, when we show mercy... There is no strings attached. You do it because you love them. Even to the outside world that do not believe in Jesus Christ. And the result of being merciful, we shall receive mercy again. This comes to an eschatological point in this. Because you and I, one day, we're going to be judged in what we did in this life. But because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we are not guilty. Even though it'll be out there, we're not guilty. Think about that. And for those who are not, do not have faith in Jesus Christ, you will be guilty. And where are you going to go? You're going to hell. That's the reality that we live in. That is the reality that we all face. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I love this. To be pure in heart is to be absolutely be loyal to God as a king. A loyalty and purity sourced in God himself and found only in regeneration. The pure in heart are those who pursue purity and uprightness, which shows in every area of your life. You see, when people see us out and about in society, they should know that we have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? They should see that. They should see that. And I tell you what, I missed something yesterday. I missed something. Rick and I were at Walmart, and the Holy Spirit pinged me. There was a young lady going to the uh, deli side. Holy Spirit said, you need to go over there. The look on her face, she was in pain for something. And I kicked myself. 
for not doing that. I should have went, but I prayed for her after that. I saw her. But we live in a society now that if you go up to approach, you know, how we live today, right? And I feel so bad. And if I would have done that, she would have seen Jesus Christ in me. And they shall see God. To the pure in heart, God can be seen in all creation, in every situation. Purity opens the spiritual eyes. In the Old Testament, to see God, you were meant to die if you saw God face to face in the Old Testament. But now, when we die, we shall see God for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Peacemakers refers to reconciliation between God and man, which results in peace between with other people, right? Some of you may, you know, you, you, you know your past. You know that, that because of the same faith, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get mad anymore. There's no point. I want to have peace with you. When we have a situation with another human being, another person, think about Jesus Christ, that internal peace, right? Because if you ask the Holy Spirit to help you out in the situation, you will find a way so you can have peace with each other, even though you may not agree with each other, but you can have peace with each other. And result of being a peace creator, the sons of God. This is a Hebrew idiom that reflected one's family character. The goal of Christianity is Christ-likeness, which is the restoration of the image of God in mankind lost in the fall, as we see in Genesis chapter 3. When one is saved, they are a child of God, being God's favor for endless eternity. Remember that. And the third point, our persecution, verses 10 through 12. I'm going to be honest, what we're facing right now, we see in the world right now. We can be peacemakers all we want, right? But because who we are in Jesus Christ, there's a very good chance some of you are going to be persecuted. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are persecuted speaks to those who have been and continue to be persecuted by an outside agent, Right? We talk about Satan doing things to us. We talk about people doing things to us that are not believers in Jesus Christ. And sometimes it's demonic. The persecution of believers is a real possibility. It is. People are, are and have been persecuted because of righteousness, that what God requires. Second Timothy 3.12 all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is present reality, again, because of those who have faith in Jesus Christ. In verse 11, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. We will be reviled and insulted, will be spoken to disparagingly in an unjustly manner. Has anybody experienced that with non-believers? It stinks. In the military, I've experienced that. People are going to falsely accuse us of many things. In verse 12, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who are before you. I like how Jesus ends this, the Beatitudes. Rejoice and be glad for your reward. It is to be extremely joyful, to be overjoyed, right? Because we haven't seen too many physical persecutions Although we could argue about the one that happened in Nashville with that Christian church, right? But we have a reward, and that's heaven. Are we, I'm going to go farther. Are, are we willing to die for Jesus Christ? Really, are we ready? Are we ready to have our homes taken away, possibly? Be beaten up? Because I'm telling you right now, if you look at the, at the culture of the United States right now, 
if you disagree with them, somebody, just disagree. Just say, I disagree with you, you're hated. Well, you know what? We're hated because of Jesus Christ. So we gotta go out there as much as we can is try to save many people as we can that the Holy Spirit leads us to. And kids, youth, you know, some say that we, can, we have it more tough, but you know what? You, we have technology is so fast right now. And that even in this last two weeks, you know what? I'm changing my technology, the media, what I do now. I am completely done with a lot of it. I can't do it anymore. I'm going to focus more time on what the Holy Spirit's leading me to talk to people about Jesus Christ and making sure people are okay. That's what it comes down to. God is a sovereign God. Yes, it can be hard to follow God and Jesus, but there's a reason why Jesus put the Beatitudes right away, as we'll see later down the road. I think it was a salt and light is next, if I remember correctly. So right there, Jesus is preparing disciples. We talk about righteousness and all that, but here is gonna be, we are to be salt and light, and that'll be next week. Let's pray. Father God, we do give you thanks and praise for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross at Calvary. And Holy Spirit, be with each of us. Be with each of us every single day to that we know that we need to strive for righteousness because God is holy. Thank you, God. Jesus, we love you, and we don't have enough words to express our love and gratitude for what you did for us. But we thank you the best that we can. In Jesus' name, amen.